my name is Jill and I'm one of the childbirth educators here at Holy Redeemer. Thank you so much for choosing Holy Redeemer for your childbirth education. Today's discussion is going to focus on the stages of labor, the stages of labor. And so it's most important that you understand that every woman's labor has basically three stages of labor. And so it's basically the beginning, the middle, and the end. And then the last stage of labor is pushing. So let's go into all the different stages and what all happens during each one of those stages at the same time. So in the beginning of your labor, we have the happy person. And so for the most part, that's approximately zero to three centimeters. So let me show you what that looks like. In the previous discussion, we talked about how we um, check a woman's cervix to know if they're in labor. So with this poster here, and I had said, you know, the way we do it is uh, it's a cervical exam or vaginal exam. And so we can't see your cervix, we just feel it. But if we were able to see it, this poster illustrates what your cervix would look like between one, two, and three centimeters. So one of the ways that we know um, where you are in the stages of labor is to check your cervix. So notice that it starts out, again, the cervix is nice and thick. It's only the center part that is opening. So it's starting to look like a lifesaver in your mouth that you've been sucking on for a little while and the center part slowly starts to open. And notice around the cervix, it becomes thinner. So it looks a lot different from here to here. Okay, the contractions start out they can be close or they can be further apart, but typically the contractions are anywhere between five to 10 minutes apart in the beginning phase of the first stage of labor. And so they can be short, 30 seconds, or they can be a little bit longer, 50 seconds. In between, however, those contractions, there's gonna be a nice big gap. So most contractions are at least five minutes apart. They could be even longer, up to 10 minutes apart in the beginning of your labor. And again, the, the sole job is to have that cervix start to soften, thin, and the center of it to open up. Mom in general is thinking, this isn't so bad. <laughs> I can do this. And so for the most part, while the contractions are occurring, she may have to focus a little bit, but she's happy in between contractions and can have conversation and answer questions. So it's, it's very important to understand for a first time mom, you know, it can be a very long process labor. It can be about 12 to 24 hours of labor. And so that includes the beginning part as well. For second, third, fourth time moms, there's a bit of a payback and labor isn't quite as long, but eight to 12 hours is on average for moms who have already had a baby. So for the most part, the first time mom gets it pretty hard. The second part of your labor is the active phase, okay? Notice the contractions are much stronger here. They're not quite as strong here, they get a little bit stronger here. They last a lot longer than they did prior to in the beginning of your labor. So they can last up to one minute or a little bit longer. The space between contractions is much shorter as compared to the beginning of your labor. And these contractions continue. There's not much break in between. Notice mom's face is not quite so happy anymore. So she's got the frowny face on. Um, the service itself is really making some progress. So four, five, and six centimeters um, are the dilation of your cervix during that time. Should we check? So again, it's always with our fingers. But if we were to be able to see it, this is what we would see. And that creamy part in the middle is actually the baby's head. So the baby's head starts to push through the cervix. Okay. And so the last part of, of your labor is um, a transitional type of a thing. It's the shortest part of your labor, which is good. Um, so it lasts about an hour um, to an hour and a half. The contractions, as you can see, are super intense. Um, they last well over a minute. And the break between your contractions is very brief. Um, as you can see here, mom actually has the not happy face on, not just to frown, this is, this is an angry face. 
Um, she's in a lot of pain. There's um, a lot of progress that's occurring during this time. And look at what our cervix looks like now. It's really thinning out around the baby's head. And part of the way the cervix thins is as the baby's head comes near the cervix and presses on the cervix, it's kind of like using a hammer on a nail. The nail starts to thin out the more you use the hammer to pound on it. The more the baby's head touches the cervix and every time there's a contraction, the uterus squeezes the baby down the birth canal and, and pushes the baby's head up against the cervix. That's another way that helps to open up the cervix. So we see more and more of the baby's head um, as we move to the last part of your labor, the transition phase. Shortest part, but most intense. And then lastly, we have pushing. So pushing basically is, is the, the active participation phase of your labor. And you can see it almost, if, if this lady was speaking, she would probably be huffing and puffing doing a lot of this. So when you're pushing, so rather than just allowing your uterus to contract, pushing the baby down, you're actually helping that process by using the muscles in your, in your bottom area, much like when you have a bowel movement, to help your baby come out of your body. So typically, the contractions are just the same. They're just as hard as the last part of your labor, but you are actively almost doing a sit-up crunch um, trying to help your body, your uterus, um, as the contractions occur, you're pushing with your body. So you're using your body to help you to be an active participant in your labor. And many women say, you know, at least initially, pushing feels good. It's better than just sitting there and you're, you're, you feel contractions in your belly. Um, so it feels good to, to be participating in your labor. Look what happens to the cervix at 10 centimeters dilated. So that's the uh, most open the cervix can be. So here's one centimeter, here's 10 centimeters. So think about it when um, you, know, you put a turtleneck on. The turtleneck starts out thick at the top of your head, but as you bring the turtleneck around your head, the turtleneck starts to go on either side of your head. So that's kind of the same way. So the cervix basically pulls back around the baby's head. And when we do an internal exam, that vaginal exam, we can no longer feel your cervix. The only thing we can feel is the baby's head. And that's a good thing. That's how we know it's time for you to start pushing, when we can no longer feel any cervix around the baby's head. That's the thumbs up to start pushing. We're not done yet, because once the baby comes out of your body, there's one other thing that we no longer need, and it was made specifically just while you're pregnant, and that was that placenta. So the placenta has to detach from the uterus and make its way out of the vagina through the birth canal and be delivered as well. So the baby comes out of your body, and so does the placenta. You no longer need a placenta if you don't have a baby in your body. So for the most women, they're so excited to see the baby, the placenta just sort of slips or slides on out. You may feel some intense cramping as the placenta separates from the uterus, and then it's expelled by the body, usually pretty easily. Um, the umbilical cord also comes too. So the, after the baby's born, that's the time where if mom or the support person wanted to cut the cord again, we use two clamps, we cut in between our clamps, and then the baby is free from the placenta and the umbilical cord. The last thing is we actually have one last stage of labor, and that's after the baby's removed from the body, the placenta's removed from the body, um, the mom has to recover from delivery, and so that's technically the last, the very last stage of labor. I hope this information was helpful to you, and thank you so much for choosing Holy Redeemer. Please continue to watch some of our other videos on the Trouble Education series. Thank you.